more than a month ago, HP sent over the HP Reverb G2 Omni Secret Edition, the crazy enhanced version of the already loved HP Reverb G2, with most of the features that are gonna dominate the next generation of VR headsets to finally unlock a better virtual presence. Hey, Ted here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel. So let's discover together this future ready virtual reality headset. Should you consider it? But most of all, is the future actually ready for it? Well, let's get into it. But first of all, this video is supported by Nexus Link. Nexus Link sent me their new wireless gaming bridge to check out with VR in its core. This accessory is made to create a powerful, direct, and dedicated connection with your VR headset to ensure lower lag and lower latency. This is useful if you think about how many devices you have connected to your network, phone, computers, grandma downloading from Napster, Alexa, well, your connection get clogged up and your VR wireless link takes a beating. And we're not even mentioning the fact that your router might be even in the opposite side of the house. With Nexus Link Gaming and Bridge, you will have instead in your dedicated five gigahertz connection, you will be able to position it directly in your gaming area and start to enjoy wireless VR in the best way possible. In the box you're gonna find everything you need to make it work with your quest and it's super easy to set up. In just a matter of minutes you'll be able to play and that's what it's all about. Nexus Link Wireless Gaming Bridge is available on Amazon and nexuslinkusa.com so check it out in the description below and thanks to Nexus Link for sponsoring this video. All right, here we are. So this, by the way, was a review unit that was sent a while back. And of course, I have to send it back as soon as possible because I did all my testing and stuff. And this is my review of this new headset. With the headset, they actually also sent a beast of a laptop that works like a charm. It's absolutely fantastic. And I've been using that in conjunction with this headset to have the best experience possible with all the different software that they pre-install in there. Now, the software is more on the business side, so I'm not gonna go through it that much, but we're gonna talk about more this headset as a whole. So here are a lot of things that didn't really change, like a lot of sames, and some things that actually change, and that's the interesting part, of course. So let's start like always with the comfort, right? Because here there are like some improvements and also some setbacks and we have to discuss about it. So the first one, the big improvement is the fact that now we have a dial on the back. So the strap is super easy and straightforward to put on and off. You just dial in, dial out, and well, it's done. Super, super easy. So gone are those straps on the side that we had in the past version, they were very clunky let's say. Overall here we have the same weight, the same presence on your head and let's remember this headset was very comfortable from the very beginning because it's very light and not having processor and stuff in there but there are some setbacks that we said we have to talk about it. So first of all it ships with actually fake leather that is not as comfy as the velvety fabric style that we had in the original HP Reverb G2. Now this letter is a bit stiffer, so it's better if you actually use it for business and enterprise where you have to switch it between different people and stuff. So you just wipe it and it's clean. It's perfect, but uh, when it comes to actual comfort, it's not as comfy as the other one. The other thing that you notice right away in the face cushion is that little square over there. And that's the heartbeat sensor, is one of the additional sensors that they added on this Omnicept Edition version. But we're gonna talk about it later. The only thing that it presses is right in the middle of the forehead and as you might imagine uh, it kind of leaves the mark after a while using it. Of course you want to have something to gather the data but maybe there was a better position available than right in the middle. It kind of gets funny, let's be honest. So overall, is it better with comfort? Well, so and so. I would say that this is more practical when the original HP Rover G2 was a bit more comfy. This thing's at the end balancing it out, so I would see that it's pretty much the same. What we have also the same here is the screen in 2160 by 2160 LCD display with RGB pixel arrangement that is just fantastic and keeps being fantastic. Even after a year that we have the HP Reverb G2, this is the exact same screen with exact same lenses in front. They are custom made for now lenses made in collaboration with Valve. So yeah, we have same lenses, same screen, same tracking, same controller, same audio. So there are a lot of same here with the original version. Bear in mind though that all of these things were absolutely pretty good. Beside the tracking, uh, the audio was fantastic, the screen is fantastic, the lenses are very good, with IPD adjustment by the way, so you can really put it in the best way possible. And what you notice looking at the lenses is actually the second difference between this one and the regular version, that is the eye tracking. Because here we have some extras. There are the eye tracking, as we said, 
the heartbeat sensor, as we said, and so, and of course, the face tracking, the little tingle on the bottom of the headset. But let's start with eye tracking, shall we? So this one is pretty straightforward. What does it do? Is it track your eyes and the position of your eyes in games and of course in experiences. At the beginning, you will have an easy calibration, uh, looking at little dots like we always do with other eye tracking devices, and it's very precise. What is this for, by the way? So in some experiences, we would like to track the places where actually someone is looking at to understand for training purposes and stuff, if you're looking at the right things. And when it comes to gaming, of course, if you want to have the eyes moving in the right way to actually have a better social interaction. Now, there are not many games that actually support these things. And uh, that's kind of a shame because I wasn't really able to test it as much as I want it. But for me, the most interesting thing about eye tracking is actually the foveated rendering. What does it mean? Well, having a high resolution display, being able to lower down the resolution where we are not looking at and actually cramp up the resolution, the parts we're looking at, it really helps a lot in visual clarity and of course with performance. Now, I have to say the method here is a bit clunky because you have to go through the NVIDIA control panel so they don't really control it directly inside the HP software or mixed reality software, but it's something that you do directly with NVIDIA. And if you don't have NVIDIA, well, uh, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, for my personal experience, I didn't really find a way to make it work reliably. Uh, with some games it works, with some game it doesn't. Uh, they need to update games to actually have that rendering working. So it, it's not really super consumer ready, uh, but there's a point that we're gonna see in the entire review. This is not really made for like a playing games and stuff, but actually to create games, experiences, training that are made for different purposes directly and not just for, you know, play and enjoy. And after the eye tracking, we have the heartbeat sensor. This is the same that we saw before in right in the middle of your forehead. And well, it's pretty easy what it does. It tracks your heartbeat. And in conjunction with also the eye tracking, can understand if you're stressed in a situation or something, you're scared or, or you know, super happy and stuff. So this of course can be implemented in games like experiences. I tried Ovation. There's an experience where you have actually to talk uh, on a stage and it tracks everything through the eye tracking of course into the heartbeat sensor and tells you if you're a good speaker or not and uh yeah <laughs> that's what it does it's pretty easy <laughs> also in this case though it's not implemented directly in different games like it would be absolutely fantastic to have an horror game that knows when you're scared and maybe doesn't do like a jump scare in the moment or maybe it does a jump scare in this moment because you said like this is the best moment to actually scared the crap out of you. And yeah, I don't know if I would like to have that, but that sounds pretty interesting. And we get finally to the last sensor that actually is face tracking, that by the way, is attached magnetically uh, to the headset. So I had a moment where I actually lost it for a bit and I couldn't find it anywhere. Then I found this little dingly thing uh, with a camera inside and I was like, oh, that, that's the face tracking. So yeah, it snaps in and out very easily. But what this accessory does is actually in the name is a face tracker. So it tracks the movements of your face. So in experience, where you have to talk or something, your face will move. Of course, your avatar face will move in the same way that your face is moving. That is absolutely fantastic because if you think and also in conjunction with the eye tracking, it will create a real telepresence. And the games actually support this kind of face tracking are very few as well. I know that the potential is there. I know that SDK is there. So developers are going to be able to get this headset, actually make it work. But right now, in this moment, there's actually no experiences to use. I tried Neos VR. Actually, that's so many crashes, so I couldn't really record something for you. But yeah, it works. It's a uh, face tracking and it does what it's supposed to do. The problem is that, as we said at the beginning, the real question is, is the future ready for this headset? And the answer is kind of no, not yet. Because here we have all the tools available to actually have the best social experience possible, to have every like data possible to, uh, to make an experience better, to understand like the user better, to understand what you're looking at in a training, to understand like how scared you are in a game. And that would be very useful in the future. Imagine like a social VR talking with people and having your face and your avatar moving in the exact same way that your actual face is moving. That would bring like really the next step, the next generation of VR forward. Right now though, we have the next generation of VR in a headset that has great resolution, great comfort, great audio, has a lot of different sensors and stuff, but they're not really experiences to use it. 
it's something to blame on HP right now? Absolutely not. I feel like it made an amazing headset and I'm really impressed by it. And I'm really sad that I have to bring it back, by the way. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not really the user to actually use it. Maybe you are a developer or something, you're making like training or stuff for different companies and then you need something like that. But right now for a regular user like us, it's kind of wasted to put money on this particular model of the HP Reverb G2 when there's a the HP Reverb G2, the regular one, that is still rocking really, really bad. And by the way, they just got a new update with the new tracking with a 30% more of tracking. I wasn't able to test it because this is the older version, but as a more reliable tracking, because we know that the tracking with Windows Mixed Reality and the HP Reverb G2 is still like not on par uh, really with the other headsets. And uh, so yeah, they made it a bit better. So super appreciated and if you buy the new model in the US it will be the new model already for this one and also for the regular model so be aware of it. Also, there are some software update where you don't even have to go through Winsmix Reality anymore, but you can launch Steam VR right away when you connect it. I am already trying this new feature and it's awesome because yeah, the Cliff House is cool and stuff, but it really like eats up some performances and you want the most performance possible in games. So it's a nice touch that actually understanding that we want to use more Steam VR directly instead of going through software to go to another software. So how do you buy? Well, the HP Reverb G2 Omnisept Edition costs $12.49, so kind of double the price of the regular HP Reverb G2 and comes also with different plans because it's not just a headset that you can buy by itself. You can if you have a private person. Instead, if you're a company, a student or stuff, things may change because there are different plans that are going to put on display to actually use this headset because if you use the SDK and stuff to actually create applications and you then you sell this application, HP will take a share out of it. Now, this is a choice that I don't really know if this is good or not. Of course, they're putting the work on putting all the different sensors in there and the SDK and the support and stuff, but I'm not really a developer, so I don't know how it works in these cases. Uh, I think it might be Fair, just a little share in this case, but it's also just a tool that you are using. So I don't really understand if this really translates in the best way possible for who is actually creating the applications. By the way, the headset itself, it's amazing. Uh, if you have the use for it, I absolutely recommend it. If you just wanna fly around with Microsoft Fire Simulator or use like different simulators to actually drive or play games and stuff, well, Probably this is not the one for you yet. Probably in the future, when you're gonna have more future ready VR headsets, well, more applications are gonna follow. And so this is gonna become useful as well for a consumer standpoint. Uh, but right now, yeah, if you want something with this resolution and this quality, I recommend to go for the original HP Reverb G2. It would be absolutely fantastic to actually have this strap on the original HP Reverb G2 as well to make it like Perfect. But that was all guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Do you think it is the right path uh, for VR? Do you see all the sensor use or you feel like it's all too much data actually being gathered? In this case though, they don't gather data for like marketing purposes and stuff. It's just for developer and stuff. So um, it's good, I guess. Privacy a bit win. We're lucky that this is HP because if Meta made it, well, uh, we will be playing in a bit more about privacy and stuff. But anyway, guys, as always, let me know what you think about it in the comment below. And if you like the video, like. If you didn't like this, is like. Subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech. And if you're really love the channel, so join button down there, little and further. Also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons who have joined the channel, of course. We also have the giveaway going on for the last giveaway for December for the Oculus Quest 2. So check it out in the description below. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. See you guys next video. Ciao.